Hello, everyone. It's a great pleasure to be here. What I'm going to talk today is um, about artificial intelligence and automation in particular, what that will do to certain industries, what some of the skills we should have to have jobs in the future, and a little bit about um, what different countries are doing. Talking about automation, how many jobs are going to be around in the future? According to this report, and it's from Oxford, published in The Economist magazine, 47% of jobs will be automated. In some ways, the exact percentage doesn't really matter. The fact is, it's indicative of a trend. And if 47% of jobs that we know today won't be around, well, let's look at some of them that these guys from Oxford think are very likely to be replaced by machines. So if you go at the bottom, it says telemarketer. It's very highly likely that if you talk to someone, that that person might actually be a chat bot or an AI bot. If you go a little bit up, it says accountants have a 94% chance of being automated or replaced by machines. And Singapore has a lot of accountants. So people get very nervous with this, especially. For those of you who've had accounting careers for a long time, you don't need to worry about this. You're experienced and you have domain knowledge. You've also learned to be creative, such as how to help high net worth individuals keep their money in trust. But for graduates of accounting schools, if they are just going to come in and do routine, repetitive work that unfortunately is often what they do in the beginning, well, then they should rethink whether that's really what they want to do. If you keep going up, you can see the people who don't have much of a chance. For instance, if you're part of the clergy, very low chance of being replaced by a machine. So that's always a, a good career. I like to start with this guy. President Barack Obama was at Harvard Law School a few years before I was an undergraduate there. And one can imagine what he must have studied at Harvard Law School. Books like this, and there are tons of books like this. Um, you know, constitutional law, tort law, tax law, contract law. But what if President Obama decided that he wanted to go back to law school now? What would he study? Well, I think he'd study a system like this. This is Ravel, created by Stanford Design School. And what it does is, it helps you search all legal cases that have ever happened and find associations between things that worked, who the defense lawyers were, arguments that can be reused in your current case, maybe the judges who search certain things. Now, let me ask you this. If you graduate from Harvard Law School, what do you think you do when you go to a law school? Uh, you learn how to search for case precedents as one of the main things. Now, you are hired by a law firm. It gives you about $150,000 a year. And it asks you to do this. How many law school graduates does it take to find the precedents for 1,000 cases? How much time of a machine does it take? A lot less. It costs a lot less. I'm not saying it's the most creative and enjoyable job that a law school graduate needs to do or wants to do. But the fact of the matter is, it's something that a machine can do. In fact, you may say, well, it can do that, but you know, there's a there's a person to person person communication that really matters. In some cases it does, in some cases it doesn't. For instance, in Georgia Tech in May last year, the computer science professor introduced a new teaching assistant called Jill Watson. And the whole semester, the students were writing to Jill, hey, Jill, you know, what time is this assignment due? Hey, Jill, how many words should this assignment have? And Jill was like a maniac. She never slept. She was awake all hours of the night. She was so persistently good in answering questions. A bit cold, people noticed. But, you know, she got the job done. And at the end of the term, he said, well, you know, Jill Watson is actually an artificial intelligence agent or a chatbot. And all the students were surprised, but also not quite so surprised because they thought she wasn't the most social creature and they'd never seen her. The point of the matter is, it didn't make a difference to them. And if they can do it, 
then we can use lawyers who are using chatbots as well. So now let's look at law schools. Law schools are changing, and Singaporean law schools need to change as well. My friend Amy Chua, who is well known for her tiger mom fame, came to Singapore two years ago with her husband. Both of them are professors at Yale Law School. And she said, Aisha, you won't believe the most popular course for freshman Yale School students at law school is robotics or artificial intelligence and law. And this is from the Wall Street Journal. There's numerous articles about it where technology or how to use it is being taught. This is not to say all lawyers will be out of a job. This is not to say people who love the law shouldn't pursue it. This is to say that as parents, we should know. It's gonna be a different kind of law, applied to different kinds of problems, and universities need to change, and we need to know that so that we can guide our children. I had a student come to me, she was going to Cambridge. She had gone to Hua Chong Institution, was very bright, had done very well in IB. And then she said, I'm going to study law. And I said, why? She said, well, my uncle and father think it's a good idea. Well, you know, okay, that's not the end of the world. She might go there and change her mind. I said, what are you going to study? Do you know what law is in the 21st century? She had no idea. First of all, her uncle and father had told her, but not bothered to instill any passion of the subject. Maybe they felt no passion. Because if you feel passion, you will communicate that to your child and you'll stay on top of your profession. How can we as parents be so busy, so busy running on a treadmill that we cannot tell our children what is happening in the very professions that we recommend for them? Now here's another thing. This is Ross, artificially intelligent lawyer. What does that mean? It means he can answer basic queries. It means if you want to know you need a parking, you got a parking ticket, and you're like, man, I got a parking ticket. Remember, not all places are Singapore where you can potentially just, um, you know, probably contest the parking ticket more easily than in San Francisco or other places. Now, in the West, Ross can automatically contest the parking ticket for you. If he didn't do that, you'd have to pick up the phone, call a lawyer, blah, 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 blah. Whereas in the app, it can automatically tell you where the car is and then send in any issues that you have. According to the CEO, Ross cannot fetch coffee for you, but can pretty much do everything else. Again, that's not true. Let me tell you, these are not complicated human being equivalents. They're doing the things that are very narrow in what they can achieve, that are repeatable and routine, but unfortunately, we spend a lot of time doing them. So I think in some ways, if we just took a good attitude towards it, it would be good.